my nose sits on the inside, so. Oh, and, uh, great way to start it off. It just hurts. <laughs> inside zit? You got an inside zit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it? What up? This is Lurpcast TV. We've got producer Beer on. We got Valdrick. We got Extreme. Johnny P. This is like our third season of doing shit. And, you know, we put a teaser out there. People were like, um, is it still around? No, it wasn't. And now it is. And that's what we're doing now. We're bringing it in live, full color, not black and white. This is color TV. This is Lurpcast TV. We're going to cover a variety of topics, a bunch of different games, a bunch of shit ton of games. We have decades upon decades of experience. And um, also, we don't really know a lot. So sometimes I might ask a question to Mike, who knows every game, and I don't know that game. And I'm speaking for the viewer sometimes and asking those questions. Um, Extreme's probably going to share painting tips. Mike's going to share tips on running events. I could share tips on creating games. We got a lot of stuff to share. Can't wait to do this for you. Uh, Biron, how often will this show come out? Uh, it'll come out every 60 minutes. Uh, we'll do a live one, dump it to YouTube. 60 minutes later, dump another one to YouTube. Uh, plan on doing this for at least a year and a half, every 60 okay. minutes. So the same as your defecation schedule. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kicking um, out Sloppy cool. Joes. Yeah, so every couple of weeks, you get a new episode. Uh, this one is really just about, like, what is this show, the history of Zlurpcast, and kind of where we got here. Uh, you'll only have to sit through this once. It's the only time we're going to do this kind of topic, where it's just, what is this? The rest will have a very specific topic you can tune into. Um, Extreme, I'm going to, because you have a better memory than I do, um, why don't you tell me what you remember from the early Zlurpcast discussions and where it all came from? Where it all started from the very beginning? From like the moment when you were too cool to talk to me at a Blood Bowl tournament to the, <laughs> me, me coming up to you. I don't think there was, I was ever too cool to talk to you. I think that's how you remember it. Yeah. But uh, So after a Blood Bowl tournament, there was some discussion. I already had kind of an idea in my mind. Um, my idea um, didn't have a name and was very different than what Sorbcast would become. Um, but I did... Some other people talked about, you know, why isn't there a Blood Bowl podcast or something? And I mentioned that, you know, I would only do it if Johnny was my co-host. And then you were kind of excited about it. And we kind of ran with it from there. And it became its own monster very quickly and kind of grew a life of its own. Because it's not at all what I had initially envisioned it for. But it was a lot more fun than what my original envision was. And what, and, year, uh, what year roughly would you say that started? Yeah, that's what I was, so this is the summer of 2009. Yes. And at, yeah. at that time, uh, there weren't any other Blood Bowl podcasts. And from the time that Extreme brought it up to me, two others started in that like two month window. So we ended up being like the third one, but it was all three were created within a month of each other, which is kind of crazy. Um, and that's because that's what we were doing. And we also knew that going in, we were going to talk about the game of Blood Bowl because we both were, you know, huge, fanatical about it. We went to tournaments several tournaments every month. I mean, there was traveling uh, across the country sometimes for these tournaments. And we knew that that was going to be our angle. Um, I think that Three Dive Block was going to talk about their leagues. I think Tackle Zone, the other one in Australia, was going to talk about tactics and like how to start a team, how to do this. To, we just said, let's just talk about tournaments. And it was going to be very timely. So if you missed one or two, you're kind of behind the curve, which is both good and bad. It's bad because it's not really evergreen content. It's good because people felt they had to listen. They wanted to get their own tournaments talked about and promoted. Uh, we wanted to talk about people we were going to see, fun stories we had, whether it was about the games themselves or about hanging out afterwards, which always had some of the, you know, the craziest stories with that. And that was kind of our angle for a long time. And I, I, I don't, maybe two, three years? I'm trying to think, like, how long that lasted before we started to think about, like, what else should we do? Do you remember that extreme? Yeah, I think it was at least three years, three years of um, that same format before we started kind of getting into other stuff. Um, of course, like, as, I think as we were finding our footing, too, we had more and more comedy bits come in. And I think that was a lot of the stuff that people still remember as being, you know, some of the I don't know, more memorable things, at least. So that was yeah. that would be the unofficial expansion beyond Blood Bowl before the real hard cut to season two you're still talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it kind of went from, um, I mean, we, we started off, I will say this to our defense, not defense, but to our credit, I guess. Um, we started off 
to be a variety show. So we did talk about tournaments and tactics. And then we had from the beginning, star player interviews that had, you know, funny voices and guest, guest characters. You know, Mike was on either our first episode or like our hidden episode zero or something. And we were trying to test it all. I mean, we had, we, we made the show to have sort of, I don't want to say it was serious, but we made it times to have tournament talk and also other shit that was funny. And so that went on for probably, yeah, at least four years. So if it started in 09, I don't think we started talking about Dreadball, which was the next thing until probably 2013. So it probably was about four years of just straight up lovable stuff, tournament and variety show. And I think what was happening was, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to think back, because we used to always, we would go to the NAF site where we had all the Blood Bowl records. We'd look at who beat who and all that. And I think I remember looking at, I think it was 2012. And like between me, Extreme, and Mike, we, I mean, we probably went to like 60 tournaments in a year. Um, it's just crazy. And then that was like the peak. And then at some point, I think as usual, Extreme brings up an idea to me. And then I will then say, oh yeah, I'll check it out. Cause I didn't look at Dreadball. When the Dreadball Kickstarter first popped up, I immediately said, uh, Blood Bowl imposter, not interested. And I didn't even look at it. I didn't, I didn't pledge for it. I had no interest at all. And Mike, Brian, did you guys pledge for the first Dreadball Kickstarter or no? Yeah. I did not. I picked it up at Adepticon. Okay. I think that's the year. The year I met you is the year I picked it up at Adepticon. I should have clarified. So you're a beer on and you're extreme. So yeah, we have no Brian. There's no Brian's. They're gone. <laughs> uh, extreme and Mike. You guys got the first Dreadball Kickstarter? Yes, I did. Yes. Yep. So you guys got it, showed me the game. I thought it was pretty fun, very fast-paced, more like basketball than football. And then we just decided to start talking about it. And that was really the first time, like outside of the people that didn't like our shtick, that was the first time people started um, shitting on the show a bit. Because think about it from their perspective. We've done you know, all of this up until this point, And now it's, hey, it's all this other game. And just because we thought it was cool, it is, I mean, not that I assumed other people would think it's cool, but we thought they might find it interesting. And there was a pretty good amount of backlash. People were like, oh, it's a Mantic podcast now. It's like, it's not a Mantic podcast. In fact, we played Dreadball the day before Blood Bowl tournament. So it wasn't even like the, the meat of our get togethers. It was sort of still the side thing. Um, I remember even, I think it was like a Saul tournament at his house where we tried to get some Dreadball going and no one was even interested. And I, that's fine. I mean, it was just, we remembered that, you know, Blood Bowl is still where, why most people were listening. You know, it was personality driven show, but it wasn't, it was also for Blood Bowl. So as time went on, we started to talk about Mantic games and other games. And then those last, like that last year of the season one of Zlurpcast, I guess you'd call it, it was not the best because it was just kind of all over the place. We knew that we lost a lot, a good amount of uh, listeners and, and subscribers, but we kind of didn't care at that point because we knew the people that liked us stuck with us through it. But um, it was always kind of weird because we're trying to figure out what our identity was because we lost it. You know, we, we had it for so many years and it was a lot of people love those early episodes. People still ask me today for those old episodes and like, you know, whether it was like the G-Dub character or the star player interviews or whatever, they love that kind of stuff. And so you also can't force it. If we weren't going to Blood Bowl tournaments, not gonna force it, it just didn't make any sense. Um, Extreme, what did you remember from that time, sort of how we were going through the, the changes and at the end of that summer no, season? No, you summed it up pretty well. And I, I think there was a short period where we did try to force it a little bit, where we weren't going to tournaments as much, but we were still trying to cover. And when, whenever we tried to cover the tournaments that we didn't attend, it was like the least exciting thing possible. We could have just been reading a newspaper on the yeah. podcast because we had no basis for anything. We weren't there. We didn't know the people that we were talking about a lot of the times and it just wasn't good. I'm glad you brought that up. That was actually part of that. Yeah, that totally forgot. So that time period, because we weren't going, we wanted to still cover it. So we asked people to submit their info and here's the problem. Like you just can't force it. I mean, we would get these half-assed things like, uh, here's who won. I think this guy got best painted. There's like maybe 10 or 12 people. And so they gave us a half-assed report. So we gave it a half-assed treatment and then they got mad at us. And like, this is just a lot of people and leagues and organizations that got pissed off. They were mad, like, oh, you, you know, why didn't you do this? Why'd you make fun of this? Why'd you make fun of this guy's name? It's like, well, 
the more you give us, the more we can work with. And so it was kind of a no win situation. It wasn't compelling for us to talk about it. We weren't really doing the community any favors and we were getting, you know, shit on. It was like a triple loss there. And it, I don't think that, I don't think that lasted very long at that point, right? No, I don't think so. And then we started, you know, looking for other stuff to talk about. And that's where we started talking about other games more. And Is that when you kind of found the slavish adherence to your old format caused problems and you said, hell with it? Let's just talk what we want to talk about. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, um, as you say, when uh, Extreme calls me Johnny, it's my slave name. We were, we were a slave to the show uh, because then it was, well, we got to keep it going. We felt we had a duty. There was still only, at that time, there was a few more Blood Bowl podcasts, but I mean, we were one of the original three, so we kind of had that, you know, we had that, cl not clout, but that sort of expectation there, but it just wasn't working. So I think... If I remember correctly, the last, like, probably episodes that in the 60s uh, were probably just of that period. It was, they weren't that great. Uh, we tried to force it, and then we really decided at, at a certain point, let's just go to the drawing board. Let's, let's rebrand to an extent with a new season and go at it. And that's kind of when we started saying, let's have a new season, new theme music, new topics. Every show is going to be a different game, kind of like this one, a different topic, each show. And... You know, some people were into it, some people weren't. And, you know, I, again, can't force it. Uh, we did have one Blood Bowl episode, which, Biron, you, you popped in the other day. Was that, was that good? Bad? What, what did you think of that? Yeah, I liked it because it was your sort of unboxing of the new set. And I, I, I don't like Blood Bowl. Let's just put that on the table. I actually despise it as a game and everything it stands for. But I enjoyed that episode. What does it, what does it stand for, by the way? <laughs> it stands for old, old game mechanics that people just don't let go of. And I don't know the hyper competitiveness of it. It just kind of drew that kind of crowd. Even people that aren't normally. Bitter because uh, Aldis decided to follow all your guys at the last. Yeah. yeah. It's all jo Josh, AKA Aldis Snow. Yeah. La and Laser Ooh. Wolf. Laser Wolf. Yeah. Laser Wolf and X Wing Fan 420. I believe he was banned <laughs> thrice. He was banned three times banning. Um, yeah. So that episode, I, it was when the new box came out. And that was for us, it was, it, was, it was a fun episode because one, we brought in, um, I think Todd with Grognard Games kind of joined as our sponsor. He's mm -hmm. like, you know, give us some mentions, we'll give you a game. And we kind of uh, did an unboxing of that. And the funny thing is that, I mean, it, in a weird way, that was what, four, maybe, I don't know how long, three years ago, four years ago? I don't even remember when that box came out. But, 2016. Uh, 16, okay. So uh, those, I mean, they're still supporting the game. None of us thought at that time that yeah. Games Workshop was going to give a shit about Blood Bowl. It was like, let's put out the game. Everybody will buy it for nostalgia. Then we'll get back to selling 40K. And they're still supporting the game with Plastic Teams, which is crazy. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of a, a, an interesting show because we didn't know what to expect. We were both kind of – we were bitter on Games Workshop a little bit and how they treated specialist games. We had no idea they were going to become Games Workshop 2.0 and give specialist games their due. We had no clue at that time. Yeah, they're doing, there's support, continuing support both Blood Bowl and Necromunda. Yep. And like, new stuff of, coming out for both. Every single one has, I mean, there's different levels. Like, they're not, you know, they're not going nuts on Speed Freaks, but every every level, they support it more than the expectation. New stuff from Necromunda on Forge World, um, the Warhammer Quest, and then the, the 40K version of Warhammer Quest. I mean, they... It's still coming out with new shit, so definitely that's awesome to see. But that was when we when we did those shows, we realized that we were playing other games. You know, we did a, an episode I think on uh, Tombstone and Wild West Exodus, all the, the Western games. We did an episode I think on Necromunda, on War Machine, all these other games that we enjoyed and wanted to talk about, and it was fun. It, it got to a point where it was it was cool because it had just enough just enough interest with Extreme and myself to talk about it. So like. If there was a game he was really big on and I wasn't, I still came up, you know, a little bit to meet him halfway on it. And then as time went on, that we kind of lost that a little bit. I think it's just we went different paths as far as what games we were looking at. But we always knew that was going to be the way to come back to it. And that's sort of what this is, too. You know, that's what the, and we, had, we had a lot of uh, other game creators on during that time, too, that were talking about their Kickstarters and stuff that were going on. Um, you know, Cucumber Sandwich and... Uh, Techno Bowl, like we yeah. were talking about those as their Kickstarter was going on. So that was pretty cool too, talking to those guys at that time when before the game was actually released. Yeah, good point. I forgot about, we had, um, yeah, Techno Bowl, 
cucumber sandwich. Uh, we had Steve with Super Show on, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, that was actually, yeah, that was cool. I, I actually like that because even though there's a lot of work to coordinate interviews with people, um, that, that's, that's awesome because not that we're going to have breaking news and, you know, in a podcast, it's not really a timely format anyway, but it's always nice to hear from a game creator's mouth or an artist's mouth, who, somebody who has something in the game as opposed to us who just play the games. So yeah, that was fun. I, I really, I like that part of it. And, you know, maybe with this show, maybe we do that at some point too. I remember really liking the Techno Bowl. Is it Brent? Brent yeah, Brent, Brent Spivey. Yeah, that one was, I actually don't really like the game that much, but the creative ideas that went into it and how that guy's brain works was really fascinating to listen to. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think, um, you know what's great about Brent is he sort of became my, my mentor in game design when I was doing Death Path. Um, I would run rule books past him and he would give me ideas, little tweaks here and there, and things that, you know, I know there's like online stuff about game design, all that. And, you know, and I don't claim to know everything by any means, but um, those little things you don't think about, like creating your own world and what's the terminology used in that world. And so I remember like not to get too far into it because we'll have another episode on it. But when we wanted to have fights occur in Death Path, we were going to call it boxing. We wanted to make it like that was a that was the name of the way to fight. It was sort of a um, futuristic just about and he's like, that's kind of confusing. He's like, remember, other countries may not care about boxing, even in the US, it's not even as popular as it once was. So he's like, why don't you say fight? And I was like, well, I wanted to make it like a thing. He's like, there's plenty of other places to make, make stuff your thing. You don't have to feel that every single part of the game has to have a, like a trademark or coined phrase. And that was so eye-opening to me because I, I always thought about the games we've played and how they always have unique terms for everything. And, but then you really think about it, it's like, yeah, but also not really. I mean, a, a fight is a fight and a battle is a battle. Like there's, there are unique terms in every game, but when it comes down to it, a lot of it is some universal terminology. So there's just asking him game design questions and those kind of things. It was great because besides Techno Bowl, he did, I mean, Mike probably has some of his, his, his collection, all those old, like, did he do, um, I know he did some RPGs, but he did a bunch of other games where you use other miniatures, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think what they were called. I'm drawing a blank on it. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch out there that he did on, on, his, on, his, on his store you can buy. But he, it was his first board game, but he's been doing miniature game rules forever. So it was cool to have someone like that. And, you know, between him and, and Sam for the Cucumber Sandwich, it's a, a penis-themed card game. I mean, what more could you want on that? Aren't they um, all penis-themed, all games? <laughs> uh, I mean, if you really think about it, yeah. But, but that's an interesting point you bring up about the fight, trying to come up with your own technology and terminology for stuff. I like to think of it, it made me for some reason think of Battlestar Galactica, where everything is familiar, but just slight tweaks like frack yeah. instead of, you know, the other yeah. word. And the one thing that sticks in my mind is their paper had all the corners cut off. Yeah, yeah, the octagon. And then I remember a documentary saying, yeah, the person that did that in episode one, we hate them because now we have to remember to do that anytime there's a paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, a continuity person that has to make sure it's the same cut every time. You tell us the future because there's no corners on our paper. Yeah. <laughs> He's teaching us, um, see what happens when you cut corners. Mm. Oh, deep meaning in Battlestar. Nice. Yeah, uh. They knew. They knew. But uh, that's kind of, you know, the evolution of Zorpcast. And then the funny thing is, so we are recording this just – Days after Biron said, Hey, can I get a copy of the old Zorpcast? And I was like, Is this a bit? He's like, No, it's not a bit. I want to hear. It. I'm like, Yeah, all right. It's just, you're being funny. And I was like, Well, why don't we just make some new ones? And everyone's ha ha ha. And here we are. Boom. Literally two, two, three days later. Yeah, that's how you make stuff happen. And, you know, and part of it, we like Extreme and I have learned a lot with podcasting. I mean, I'm, I think it's cool that we got to not only be one of the you know, one of the first Blood Bowl podcasts, but there wasn't a lot of podcasts in general at that time. I mean, it's easier to become a, a, a whatever you want to call it, a, a big fish, little pond, all that kind of stuff, when there's not as much competition. Now, I mean, there's everybody in the world is a podcast and each channel, and that's fine. I love it. We, everybody should be content creators. It's awesome. But, you know, what we learned early on is going to help us with a show like this as far as don't try to do too much, don't try to overcomplicate it, um, just take things in stride, learn how to deal with uh, comments, good and bad, all that kind of stuff. It all goes into a podcast or a YouTube channel uh, going forward. 
I'll be happy if we get any comments. No, I mean, <laughs> we'll get comments. I mean, <laughs> so why are you? Why are most of you guys fat, but one guy's not? I, mean, I don't know. Well, he's wearing the Slurpcast jersey, which makes him look fat. Yeah, classic yeah. Kevin Smith. Where, where's the clothes? Where's Extreme? Is he here or is he here? He's to your left. <laughs> yep. Oh, um, direct left. Other side. Other left. Oh, this. There. Is, oh, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> Let's get all get all the directional kinks out in the first episode. There's, there's, there's Extreme. Left, left is right. Not Extreme. X. Stream. I got it wrong. Yeah, you, you right. got scolded. Let's talk about those names because earlier you asked what name should we put on, and you know I know you're not a fan of Johnny P, even though that's the name I've gone by on the on Slurpcast forever. You you, you said it's your, my slave name. Yep. Um, and Extreme has gone by Extreme, and you put EX. Yeah, I I don't know what I was thinking. But did you do that on purpose? Because you know. No, I did not. Others. Okay. I should have uh, known that. I, I do that, but my brain wasn't working. I assumed it was on purpose. I thought it was a bit of a rib, but yeah, yeah, I thought it was a harmless rib. And, uh, <laughs> it was not harmless at all. And Extreme really is self-conscious about the, the no e. He's not. He does not like that at all. What's this little message on the screen, Biron? I was, I, I was gonna put under yours, Toby. Your <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's kind of where this came from. Um, I do so obviously people who know Slurpcast know Extreme myself, but I think this is a good forum to introduce Biron and Mike slash Valdrick and you guys talk about sort of um, what got you into gaming and how you got into the whole Slurpcast family. I'll go first. Uh, I got into gaming because uh, Todd Grognard Games opened his first store, Crooked Act Games, within stumbling distance of my house. And that's how I kind of got into gaming. I was always into like D and D and stuff like that, but miniature gaming was because of his location. Started off with Battlefleet Gothic, weirdly enough, and then mm -hmm. uh, then after uh, Crooked Hat Games closed, I think it was open for about three years. I started going to Adepticon, and that's where I got introduced to um, the Mantic Cult, and started playing Dead Zone and Dreadball. And that's how I met uh, JP and and Brian, aka X. Wait, so. You met you. You got interested in Mantic, then met us, or was it yeah, vice versa? Mantic first. Really? Yeah. Really? Wow. I think it was. I think Jose told me about Dreadball that you introduced Jose to, so that I said, "Okay, I'll go buy it." And then we started playing at the Goat, and that's when I met you guys. But I think I met you in passing at that Adepticon when it was still uh, down south a little bit. Yeah, I think um, I think you're right on that because. Uh, there was that Adepticon where we were playing a bunch of Mantic games and there were organized games and they were, we were, I was doing stuff at the booth with Ronnie and all that stuff. And I, I kind of remember that time period. And I think as I started talking to Todd again, Todd being the owner of Grognard Games, great store in the Chicago area. And um, I started talking to Todd again. He told me, I have my, this friend, uh, Brian, and he's like, he's kind of weird. He doesn't really like do well with others. Um, he's got a very hard exterior, but when you crack that open, he's a softy inside. Uh, he has a big head, uh, literally and figuratively. He said all these things about you, and he very much undersold you, but we decided to meet you anyway. I actually forgot he said that, and then I was like, hey, what, what happened to that guy that he was telling us about? And then I was like, oh, shit, that's, that's firing, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> and... and We'll see the origin of the Biran name for exactly. another episode. Why don't, why don't you go with that, Biran? Oh, so this is at Grognar Games. There's, a, there's this guy there. He's, I think he's Turkish. And, uh, and his name was Taco Bill. I don't know if that's his, his <laughs> name. Why did you say his name was Taco Bill? What is he now? <laughs> he's not with well, us he, anymore. Well, he's a Turkish <laughs> R-baby. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Turkish Arby's? What did you say? Yeah. yeah, close enough. Okay. But he was trying to start a campaign. I think it was a 40K or a kill team campaign or something. And he was he was writing up, like, he's like, are you going to join my campaign? And I said, no, no, I'm not. He goes, well, I'll put you in anyway. And so he had his laptop with him and his personal fan. He yeah. had the fat guy fan. <laughs> fat guys that always have to have a fan blowing on them. Yeah, there's, USB fan, ready to go. Yeah, there's there's oh, yeah. two of them. There's two of them at Grognar Games. There's there's Taco Bill and there's Paul DeVolpe. They both have to have fans blowing on at all times. But anyway, so he takes it up and then he shows it. To, 
what's go ahead i was gonna say they're both you know gamer size that's kind of a thing you said yeah that guy I, I think he I, I would put taco bill as gamer class four and volpe is gamer class six. Oh, wow <laughs> okay is, wait is lower better uh, you're gonna i don't well yeah I, leave it up to the interpretation <laughs> i i would say volpe's better so higher is better okay so yeah, it, way better than Taco it, it is Bill. like a weight class. It's kind of like British people say stone. Right. How many stone? Yeah. He's 17 stone. Right. It's actually not a weight. It's a rating scale and higher is better. Okay, good. Just check yeah. it. All right, go on. I remember once Paul Volpe asked me how I would do green. And I'm like, Paul, you've been painting miniatures for 500 years. You know better than I do. Yeah. He, like, he was around when green was a, became a thing. He was around <laughs> when they would, would, would handcraft things out of lead with a knife. Like, anyway, so he was typing up his, his campaign that never was going to happen because no one's going to do a campaign he's running. And he shows it to JP here, uh, Johnny P, sorry. <laughs> and he had my name typed as Biran, B-I-R-A-N. And you said, you mistyped Brian, Brian's name. He's like, I don't know how to spell it. Yeah, he got very <laughs> defensive. He's like, I don't know. Uh, look, I know how to spell people's name. Who cares? Like, but I mean, it wasn't even... Like the, the normal wrong spelling is brain. That's yeah. that's yeah. first. That's your first mistake. If you're gonna misspell Brian, you put brain. Everyone knows that because brain's gonna come up as a normal word. Beer oh, and, correct. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, had the had the red squiggly under it. <laughs> that did not ring any fucking bells whatsoever in its head. And then instead of saying whoops or oh I, it's I don't know how to spell it. Like what? It, maybe he was afraid if he corrected it then and there he would spell it even more wrong. Yeah, just what a, what a strange, like, like, like a, a strange hell to die on. Like, I can't, I don't know how to spell the name. That's it. Like, not a big deal, dude. Just fucking say you messed up. Who cares? And But it stuck. You, it stuck, and you became, uh, you know, baptized as Biron. Well, I kind of, for a while, I was playing around with Biron being the mean Brian. Like, Brian will be nice to Anthony Sarlo. Biron mm -hmm. will be mean to Anthony Sarlo. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of where it started. It was almost like, um, you know, you had your, you know, even though they look the same, it would be like the bad guy has the goatee. Right. The yeah. right. Version. Buran would have the little, uh, the Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Brian was He-Man or Faker? <laughs> Brian was He-Man. Buran was... Faker, I think he was called, right? Wasn't the fake He-Man called Faker? Yeah. I think he was. Yeah. Extremes are resident on uh, Master of the Universe con contact there. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that just kind of stuck and became your name. And also because we would talk and then we already have a Brian, so mm -hmm. it was harder to, to do that. But uh, it stuck. You are now Biron, producer Biron, and you are now the person that is putting this show on the air, right? Yes. Yes, I will be uploading and, and doing any edits as much as I can. Uh, but the other main reason I asked you to put the make the podcast available is I wanted specifically to listen to the one where Extreme told this story about me at Adepticon where I kind of shat at him, shat all over his face at a demo game, and he <laughs> pronounced it Byron. Yeah, he did say Byron. And if for some reason, I had it in my head that I wanted to listen to that again. So, when but I don't want to make it seem. Like I was just trying to find listen to the ones where I'm involved. Well, then so can you make them all available to hide? It's the hard. Like, it's like if you remember a line from a TV show and you go to YouTube, it's very hard to find that line. But you're yeah. looking for By Byron or Byran or whatever he called or or By Tor and the Snow Dog for Rush fans, and um, you know it was one of those where that was the moment where I think you you started listening to it because you then knew I'm getting talked about. So I'm going to listen more and people, you know, everyone is a little, you know, into their own self-interest. So oh yeah, for sure. More because you wanted to hear every In fact, then you like donated money, you did all this stuff because you wanted to be talked yes. about more to, to inflate your ego a bit. Totally. hundred percent. You were, you were saying extreme. Yeah. My defense for saying your name wrong. I will always interpreted your name through text. I never heard you guys talking about it. <laughs> so when I read it, B I R A N as Byran. Oh, yeah. A lot of good exploits at, at Adepticon, for sure. Yeah. I mean, he's by ran Like, he runs both ways. Yes. You know, he, <laughs> exactly. That's a good point. I never thought about that. Like, we went in knowing – it's like we expect someone from another country to learn English, and they don't know that we got a lot of fucked up shit in the English language. That is you, Extreme, thinking immediately by ran because it looks like by ran mm -hmm. 
But I've been corrected, and now I know the correct way of saying it. So. And, and, and how does it go, testing? <laughs> B ran. <laughs> no. B -ran. I don't know. It's still by ran. I don't care. B, B ran? That, that's, his, that's his rap name, like B yep. rap. Uh, that's still by ran. By ran. You're known as Byran in our house too, so yeah, we got lazy. <laughs> so that's kind of how um, Biron came into um, our our group here. Um, the youngest tenure of the, uh, as far as um, his connection to all of us here. But um, what you don't have in years, Byron, you make up in head size. Yes, <laughs> figuratively and literally. Um, Mike, why don't you go? Because you've got a much longer story. Uh, both in like gaming life and real life, because you're the oldest. <laughs> and I, I knew Mike before I knew Extreme as well. So there, there's that story. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I got into gaming when I was in uh, first edition D&D, &D, and my groups of friends were playing D&D &D and RuneQuest and Melee and all, all the games like that. Then that kind of went away. We also had miniatures, because the old heritage, dungeon dwellers and all of that, we liked painting them, and I was okay at it. And then kind of got out of it in college and then kind of got back into it in grad school. And I started playing this miniature game called Cronopia, which was a fantasy. It was sort of a competitor for Games Workshop in like 96, 97. Was that, um, was that with Mutant Chronicles was part of that? Mutant Chronicles is the same company, yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah, it was Target Games, which was, I forgot what was before then, but yeah. It's the same it, it, it was it, it was like GW. They had a fantasy world and a yeah. science fiction world. Cronopia has some great models. I used oh, yeah. one in my Chaos Army. It was this dude with, with the cape, the chaos looking guy with this plasma gun kind of thing. And they were all, all one piece, so they yeah. never broke. Um, they looked good, they were smooth, they painted easy. Yeah, I, I love those models. Oh, yeah. It, it was a good game, too. I never but, played and then I got into Blood Bowl. Oh, I actually, I, I wanted all the, I love dwarves. And I wanted all the Dwarf Slayers. And so someone told, this was, again, I think- In games or in real life, Mike? What? Good point. <laughs> dwarves in games or in real life? Oh, both, yes. Okay, good. Who's so, better, uh, Gary Coleman or Emmanuel Lewis? Who's better? Uh, probably Lewis, because he's, he's alive. <laughs> I mean, for now. Yeah. But yeah, he was, he, Gary Coleman's in a uh, musical, so uh, he, he does have that. Uh, but- Time's going to tell on that one. Yeah. Right, but anyways, uh, so someone pointed out, oh, there's two Dwarf Slayers in this Blood Bowl team. So I actually bought the Blood Bowl team just to get the Slayer models. And then uh, this store in, shoot, uh, it's not Hemp, Indiana. It's whatever town is on the other side in Illinois, was running a Blood Bowl league. And I was like, oh, I have this team. So I started playing that. And then your brother, Dean, put up a – an ad at the bunker about a, a Blood Bowl league starting there. And that's where I was like, I got nothing else going on. So I'll, I'll well, that was, uh, that was like two, I think the bunker opened in Oh three or Oh four around that time. Cause that was right when crooked hat Todd's old store closed up. Um, yeah. that time. you know, it might've been even earlier. I think the bunker was open for a year while Todd was, cause then Todd started to diversify and still like paintball and other shit. Yeah. Uh, I think the bunker opened in like Oh two or Oh three. And yeah, I mean, for us, we loved it because one, Downers Grove was central to everybody. Yeah, really it was by well. all the highways. And for me and Dean, we had, um, we always played Blood Bowl leagues in his basement. And so like, I, you know, Mike's wife, Katie, her and I played in Dean's league in his basement for years. And that's, it was awesome to get out to the real world. And, and you know, it's, it's hard to recruit people when you're playing in a basement. The good thing is you can be very selective about who you invite over. Yeah. Uh, but when you go to a store, it's like, hey, I want in. It's like, oh, this guy sucks. But he saw us. It's too late. You know, so that, that happened at the bunker. And the league just grew uh, exponentially. I mean, we probably had – we went probably from a six-person league to, you know, close to 20 in a matter of a year yeah. when, when Mike joined on with everything. And then, yeah, the rest has just gone from there. I mean, I the bunker and all the games that all of us were playing there, and then we start playing other games. And when the bunker closed, we – where did we go next? Was that, uh, was that the goat? Probably gaming goat at that point. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah it's really weird. Like I think about, um, I think about that, those times of the bunker and, you know, one thing that it was always, always awesome having Mike around because 
no matter what game I was interested in, he was always down to play it. Whereas, you know, other friends that played different games, you just never know if they had any interest in it. So, you know, and, and I tried to do the same, you know, on the other side. So if Mike said, let's play, um, what was the fantasy version we played with Storms of Chaos? You know, we let's, let's play that. Oh, we, yeah, yeah. You know, so we yeah. tried to just keep our thing going, even though the bunker ran events, but a lot of times there were people we didn't really like playing or yeah. tournaments and that, but like, it was nice to have a couple people that we played games with. And even though that, you know, we had Dean and Paul and a few others that were kind of off and on that, you know, me and Mike always played whatever. And we tried to keep something going at all times, even if there were other side games going on, we wanted to make sure we had some kind of like ongoing meetup just because outside of blood bowl, even just because we wanted to, you didn't want to lose it. And yeah. we've now seen, you know, I don't know how many years, 15 probably years later, at least, um, how easy it is to lose gaming groups and, and ongoing things because of just one person bows out and then everyone bows out. So yeah, yeah. it takes effort to keep gaming groups going. And we, we kind of, we did that early on without knowing what we were doing because now we see the other side of it where, oh shit, it does suck. Like what, you know, we have more games than players where at the time it was the opposite. We had yeah, yeah, you know, sure. more, more friends than, than, than what we not know what to do with. So we always bought new games. And so I think it was important, important lessons we learned as time went on and we lost the bunker and we lost places to play. And we either, you know, gathered in someone's garage or someone's house or a new store to kind of not take that stuff for granted. And, and it makes a lot of us, me, me personally, I can speak for, you start to think about that. And then you remember how supporting your local stores is a, is a huge deal because you want them to be around. So you want to get some shit there because you want to make sure they exist because otherwise you're, you're stuck at someone's house and they're watching their kids or they the game takes six hours because of, you know, well, I got to do laundry and make dinner, but it, you know, give, give me a few minutes. Like what? Like this, let's not have the floor. Yeah. Yeah. I played games on the floor and shit, yeah. you know, so it, you miss that stuff. So I think it's important to have, you know, gaming leagues and we've all experienced, you know, now, you know, Biron and Mike are in the same area, but you know, extreme and I are in different areas, but we've experienced, you know, uh, the plus and minuses that go along with trying to keep a, a gaming group going, you know. I, I, from I a, think it's been uh, a pretty – well, go ahead, Brian. From a Zlurpcast history standpoint, it's interesting. At the beginning of that, you mentioned that you knew Mike before you knew me. I knew Mike before I knew you as well. So Mike's like the original key to Zlurpcast. <laughs> well, much like the game Kevin, Kevin enemy, is, the, is the link to every actor, Mike is the link to every gamer. <laughs> we're all one degree away which is awesome i mean it, 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 i mean it would suck to be like three or four away from mike we're all one from mike which is great uh, I mean, we are linked to we're linked to like historical figures you know presidents and all this stuff because of mike he's our, our link to, to the past and yeah, once you get to three third degree of mike that's when you get that's when you get the Michael bills yeah <laughs> Yeah, if Mike is sort of, not to get all, you know, I know Mike is a man of science, but if Mike is the nucleus, as you get further out, um, it, you can definitely tell, like, who's on the outskirts. Yeah. You know what I mean, they're so far con disconnected from Mike, it's like, who the fuck are you? Like, yeah. there are people third degree of Mike that I hate. <laughs> you know who Have you, you even are. met Mike? <laughs> what? Have you even met Mike? <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's, it's kind of cool that, you know, when we started Slurpcast in, in uh, middle of 2009, you know, Mike was on our initial test episodes and he went with us to all these tournaments. And then we started to get away from Blood Bowl. Um, that's when Biron kind of joined the fold and all that. And so I think it's, it's kind of cool that as the evolution of Slurpcast has now brought us to this third season, now using YouTube as the, uh, uh, the place as, a, as opposed to a podcast, the people that joined the group along the way, I mean, are a big part of it now. And in, in a weird kind of way, it seems it's weirder to think about the Zlurpcast crew without you guys, as opposed to, you know, when it was just extreme to myself, even that's what it was for the majority of the time. So because of the amount of games that we play together and, and, and uh, the stuff we talk about and all the different uh, adventures that have come along the way. So I think it's important to, on this kind of show, when we can have the four windows and extreme is where? He's here? Yep. Yep. And, and is Mike here? Yep. yep. You got here. it. Yep. Cool, I got it. Uh, uh, put my name right here. Yeah. Boom. Well, it's, it's weird. The new one's actually showing names now, so I'm gonna have to figure that. This out. is like, remember the uh, the Encyclopedia Encyclopedia Britannica kid? He's like, and where's that number again? Excellent. And you're like, 
That's a deep cut. Uh, wow. Yeah. Well, you all got it, so I'm fine with it. Um, so, yeah, so future episodes, this is what to expect. Um, it's going to be the four of us talking about uh, games and also gaming topics. Uh, we're going to try to alternate those to keep it a little bit fresh, but if you skip one because you don't like the game, that's fine. You'll get the next one. And um, ideally, you want to subscribe. I don't want to say smash the subscribe button. Can we say, like, slurp the subscribe button? Can we slurp it? Like, boom. Slurp that like. Cast slurp the like. Button. Yeah. You know, social media is out there, at Slurpcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, go to Slurpcast.net as well. You can buy Slurpcast merch like this. And what do you got, Extreme? Oh, yeah, you're not going to be able to buy that one, though. That was a limited one. Sh we shouldn't have shared that. <laughs> oh, now people are going to want it. Yeah. You're going to have to turn in 400 proofs of purchase and 395 shipping for that one. Um, but, How many uh, mantic points is that? A lot of mantic points. I don't know the cash value on that, but... <laughs> Um, we're going to have a store set up, so if you want to buy stuff so you can have Slurpcast stickers and things, you can do that, and we'll get a little bit of a cut to help pay for um, anything we've spent on the show. But that's kind of what to expect from here. I think that um, between the four of us, uh, we've played every, almost every tabletop game out there. Um, and Mike, probably, if you were to make a pie graph, Mike's 50. <laughs> Not just 50 years old, but also 50, <laughs> like a slice of the pie. And then the three of us are like... Slivers. Whatever that comes to. We're just slivers. <laughs> so um, I think that's what you expect. Um, Biron's got a lot of cool stuff in his background there. A lot of us have games in the background. Um, a lot of these games we'll talk about. And um, if there are things you want us to definitely hit, feel free to put that in the comments below. Um, since Biron is putting the video up, I'm assuming he's also checking the comments. Oh, of course. Mostly because the rest of us have fragile egos and we can't handle it. <laughs> Uh, All right. Anything? Thanks, everyone. Wait, what? I was good. I was going to end the show. Oh, okay. That's where were you at time wise? I have no idea. Okay. So Come on, producer. These yeah. these shows won't have a time limit. Obviously, I would expect about an hour in each one, but it could be a little less, a little more, uh, depending on how into the game we are. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out future episodes. This is the first one to watch, and you can see what to expect. But I think that, again, between the four of us, we'll all have games we want to showcase. We'll all have topics we want to showcase. We'll all add whatever we can to it. That's it.